World TB Day was commemorated on the 24th of March to raise awareness of this treatable disease. So let's take some time now to look at some of the reasons behind some patients defaulting in their treatment with the research now showing that undiagnosed depression in tuberculosis patients is threatening control of the disease. I'm joined by Professor Christo Haines, who is with the Center for Health Systems Research at the University of the Free State. Prof, thank you for, for making time for us. So effective anti-TB drugs have been available for almost eight decades now. Um, but despite this, we continue to see TB really wreaking havoc across the country and the world. What is missing? Well, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. What I think is missing is effective implementation of laudable policies. So in South Africa, we've had the National Mental Health Policy Framework and Strategic Plan, which was already promulgated in 2013. But it has never been fully implemented or resourced and has not been as instrumental as it should have been in generating momentum towards the transformation of mental health in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Mental health services should be offered as a key component of primary health care services. However, there is increasing evidence of poor policy, poor mental health policy implementation. For instance, mental health has been perceived as being less prioritized, less resourced, and poorly supported compared to other priority programs such as HIV and maternal and child health. Mm. And, and we'll talk more about the link to, to mental health and what needs to be done. I want us to reflect on some of the commitments that were made in the past and, and assess where we are now. Um, in 2014, the 67th World Health Assembly endorsed a global strategy and, and, and targets for TB prevention, care and control. It's a strategy that envisions uh, that, you know, we'll have a world without TB, you know, aiming to end this pandemic by 2035. Do you think we're still on track towards that target? Unfortunately, I don't believe so. Because the most recent data suggests that only 78% of TB patients in South Africa are successfully treated. And then an, an, another global partnership goal was for 90% treatment and success by 2020. So we are far cry from that. Um, hence the theme of Friday's World TV Day was we can end TB. But whether this is a realistic target, especially in the Southern African region with its high HIV, TV and mental health comorbidity is an open question. Mm -hmm. The Deputy President said on Friday that the other challenge is that people are not completing their treatments. I think we've had a treatment success rate of about 78% in, in 2020. Are we ever going to attain that global target of 95%? Well, I believe we have to start with implementing our very good policies. Um, routine TB testing uh, or routine screening for common mental disorders like, like depression, anxiety, substance use disorder must take place not only at diagnosis of TB, but through the treatment. Yeah. It becomes it becomes even more important when the patient is co-infected with HIV and you have a huge pull burden, which is hard for the, for the person to take all the drugs, especially if they are experiencing poverty and nutritional deficits. Yeah. Let's talk now about more about that, that issue of TB and mental health. I think one of the challenges... Um, confronting TB control, as you've explained, is that frequent comorbidity of, of TB, which is mental health illness. And we have seen compelling evidence linking TB to common mental health problems, such as uh, depression, um, anxiety, alcohol abuse as well, during the course of their treatment. How do we address that? Well, 
uh, prof. Should we have TB care uh, that is provided in close collaboration with, with other primary um, health care programs such as mental health? Yes, absolutely. We need integration of mental health into all other primary health care programs, not only into HIV, maternal and child health, but also into TB programs. And TB programs have been severely negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, with people being afraid to go and collect their medicines at clinic for fear of contracting a second or even a third infection as well. Um, I'll stop there, sir. Mm. But, but our efforts to integrate mental health and TB care, aren't those going to be confronted by the challenges that already exist, such as limited capacity, uh, the non-recognition of mental health as a problem, um, we've got insufficient resources and, and other TB-related social stigma. Absolutely. The, you know, in the, at the primary health care level, even at the district level, you don't have ring-fenced funding for particular programs such as TB, where you can specifically use available funding to improve a specific program. Of course, all the all the programs' budgets are collapsed into a single budget. And often um, the TV program is at the end of the line. Mm. I think it's been sort of a, a tradition to see mental health care as a specialized field and primary health care facilities are perhaps not as attentive as they should be to this huge burden of mental health disease in our country. Yeah. So if, if that's what we need to achieve, it's going to be important then to monitor TB patients for symptoms of depression. How are we doing on that front so far? We are seeing little evidence of routine screening, um, unfortunately. Mm. You know, you, you, you need routine screening at the diagnosis phase, very important but through our TB treatment, it becomes even more, uh, more important when the patient is co-infected and has to undergo co-treatment for TB, HIV, with a higher pole burden, which has a, a negative effect on treatment adherence mm. for both TB and for HIV and for other ailments that the patient might suffer. Yeah. Well, Professor Christo Haines at the Center for Health Systems Research at the University of the Free State, thank you for making time for us.